ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ഭരണത്തിന്റെ കീഴിലേ ദൈവാരാധന at the appointed time all such questions will be answered if you have patience before you make any covenant or friendship with anyone take holy spirit with you jalathalum aathmavinalum janikkunnillengil oru venum devarajyathil praveshikkuka sadhyamalla the lord be with you and with your spirit A reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be, me, you may be also. and you know the way to the place where i am going thomas said to him lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way jesus said to him i am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you know me you will know my father also from now on you do not know him you uh, now on you do know him and have seen him philip said to him lord show us the father and we will be satisfied jesus said to him have i been with you all this time philip and you still do not know me whoever has seen me has seen the father how can you say show us the father do you not believe that i am in the father and the father is in me The words that I said to you I do not speak on my own but the father who dwells in me does his works I believe me believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me but if you do not then believe me because of the works themselves very truly I tell you the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact will do greater works than these because i am going to the father i will do whatever you ask in my name so that the father may be glorified in the son if in my name you ask me for anything i will do it the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ please be seated my dear brothers and sisters now in this homily i would like to speak to you about the same word of god which we reflected some time back some 2 3 days ago that is jesus said in today's gospel we read the same passage jesus said i am the way and the truth and the life i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me no one can come to the father except through me this word of god is very important my dear brothers and sisters we are living in a multi religious context we are living in a world where there are so many religious ideologies so many people who follow many types of gods and many types of beliefs therefore and knowingly or knowingly we the catholics also kind of cultivated a kind of new philosophy or new ideology to tolerate and compromise the teaching of the church compromise the teaching of the church especially with regard to this word of god there is no salvation but only salvation only in jesus there is no way to the heavenly father but the only way to go to the father is jesus christ we cannot as christians teach that there are so many ways in this world to go to god and one of those ways is jesus we cannot teach like this because that is against our basic christian catholic faith so the most important faith for which jesus lived and died 
the uh, the most important faith for which early christians lived and died all the martyrs in the catholic church lived and died is this there is salvation in no one else but only in jesus christ no one can go to the heavenly father except through the through the name of jesus through jesus so my dear brothers and sisters we have to remember we should never compromise the teaching of jesus we should take the teaching of jesus as it is as the teaching of the church the church always teaches the truth in the bible so we should never compromise with that no compromise at all this we have to keep in our mind nowadays we have a tendency to compromise the teaching of jesus in many ways the most of the teachings of the bible we compromise compromise we interpret in such a way that it is adapted according to uh, our own taste and desire this tendency is not only the modern tendency but it was this tendency was there in the beginning in the first century itself that is why saint paul has written it down many times about this danger of compromising the teaching of jesus this danger of compromising the teaching of jesus saint paul has already written down let us read first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 now the spirit expressly says that in latter days later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons bible says very clearly now the spirit expressly says that in later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons therefore my dear brothers and sisters we have to be very very careful in the later days these kinds of dangerous teachings will come out nowadays there are so many varieties of teachings of the bible one of which is prosperity gospel the prosperity gospel is not the teaching of the bible the same way there are so many kinds of biblical misinterpretations are going on in this world we read like this second timothy chapter 4 verse 2 4 second timothy chapter 4 chapter 4 verse 2 to 4 let us read we read like this i solemnly urge you proclaim the message be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable be persistent whether time is favorable or unfavorable convince convince rebuke and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching next one for the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine but having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine but are having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit to their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away from wander away to myths was for and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths so this is what the lord says therefore my dear brothers and sisters we have to be faithful to the teaching of the bible otherwise this is dangerous and there are many kinds of misinterpretations are going on there are many people say the bible you know the teaching in the bible is not complete therefore some other bible some other some other religious book should be read we also re remember 2000 years ago jesus christ came and established the christianity the christianity the new movement new way 
Most of the religions came later. We know Islam came almost 600, 500 years later to later uh, uh, to, uh, Christianity, after Christianity, after almost 600 years later. And also, we know how almost all the religions came into existence. But now, in this modern, most modern world, when we stand for the teaching of the Bible, we have to be faithful in the teaching of the Bible. And we should never, even when we practice it as a Christian, when I practice the teaching of the Bible, it should be 100% commitment, 100% of faithfulness to the teaching of Jesus. Let us read one more passage to uh, clear this uh, area. Galatians chapter 1, verse 7 onwards. Okay, so Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 onwards. I am astonished that you are so quickly, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Then verse 7, not that there is another gospel. There is no another gospel. So he says, not that there is another gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Some are confusing you. There are many people say Jesus Christ is only a prophet. He is not a God. And there are many other un unnecessary teaching and giving confusion to you. Next one, verse 8. If anybody who say Jesus is only a prophet or Jesus is not God or, Jesus, or any kind of teaching that comes, comes in front of you, remember this. 2,000 years ago, what does the Bible teach us? But even if we, St. Paul says, even if we or an angel from heaven, remember, an angel from heaven should come and proclaim to you a gospel contrary to what we proclaim to you, let that one be cursed. So this is what we have to remember in our mind when we, if anyone come and confuse you and teach you anything against the Bible, anything against the teaching of the Bible, remember anything that comes, even if it is coming from an angel and ask, to, ask them to write it down and preach, then remember that cannot come like that. If it all comes, let them be cursed. That is what the Bible teaches. It is not my teaching, it is Bible teaching. I remember some years ago, we went to uh, another country to preach the gospel, and then uh, the, or the organizers of the retreat, they told us, Father, shall we go out for a co coffee break? And then we went, went outside. We went for a walk, and then he said, Father, there is a shop here, it's a soup shop. Only soups are sold here. There is nothing else. Only soups are here. So shall we go and have a soup? It is run by an in Indian. So uh, why don't you go and have a coffee? Maybe, maybe he is coming from your neighborhood. So go and check and we'll go and get introduce yourself to that man, the owner of the shop. So I said, okay, we will go. And we went. And then the owner came and welcomed us and he made us to sit around the table and he said, Father, this is a shop, only soups are sold here. Some young men and women are here who are working in the kitchen, who are past their um, hotel management and they are very good. They do all the experiments, they do taste uh, different varieties of, uh, the, of soups. So I said, okay, very good. Then he said, Father, shall I order the best soup? I said, okay, very good, no problem. So then he ordered the best soup that was available in that sh shop. It was a ch uh, chicken soup. And he, he brought in front of me the chicken soup, uh, soup. And then I kept it in front of my table. I, in, he kept it in front of my table. And then the others were also in front of the table. And I looked inside the soup and there was not much ingredients. And the color was just white and there was no any, any other special thing I could not notice. So I looked around on the table and then I saw on the table there was um, uh, tomato sauce, pepper, chili, so, uh, uh, the salt and so many other uh, ingredients kept on the table. 
Then, as usual, you know, it's our normal custom. We start, I started taking one by one. First, I took some pepper and then I took some sauce and then I put some salt and then there was some other sauce, chili sauce and many other sauce. I started mixing everything and made the soup very colorful. And then I started tasting it. And the owner of the shop, he was watching me eat, drinking this soup. And he was shocked. When, I, when he saw me putting all these uh, ingredients and making a different soup, he asked me, Father, with lots of difficulty, after lots of experiment, with so many people tasting, uh, at the end we came up with a very good soup with the best taste. But when it is provided in front of you, you did not even taste it, but instead you started putting all these ingredients and made another soup and you are tasting it. And then he said, Father, this is not the soup we gave you. This is your soup. And then I opened my eyes. And only then I realized, I am making my own soup in his shop. I am making my own soup in his shop with his ingredients. And at the end, after the soup, I will go out and I will say, the soup is too chilly, too hot, too like this. We complain. My dear brothers and sisters, this is exactly what is happening in this world today. So we are given a Bible from Jesus. God gave us a Bible. We take our Bible. Then we take our own ingredients. Our masala, our ingredients, our pepper and chili and add our own. And make our own Bible. And we follow that Bible. And we say we follow Jesus Christ. We are making our own soup. We are making our own Bible. And we are following our own Bibles. This is not the Bible which Jesus gave. Just like the shopkeeper told me, Father, this is not the soup we gave you. You made another soup and you are drinking that soup. My dear brothers and sisters, in this most modern world, we Catholics have to remember one thing. All the Christians, we remember one thing. You must be a follower of Jesus Christ. But are you sure you are following the true teaching of Jesus Christ? Are you sure you are truly and truly following Jesus Christ? Don't you know that knowingly or unknowingly, we are making our own soup. We are making our own Bibles. And we are following that teaching. We have to understand this very seriously. We should follow. That is why Jesus said, Jesus said, you have to. Jesus said very clearly, if anybody has got any enemy, it's not just forgive your enemies, love your enemies. We read like this, Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. We read like this, Matthew 5 44. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You know, it's not enough that we forgive them. We have, we have to love our enemies. This is the teaching. How many of us are practicing it? Another word of God. Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 verse 28. Matthew 5 28. I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Jesus said, if you look at a boy or girl with a lustful eye, you committed adultery already inside of your heart. But we compromise saying it's okay. We say it's okay to watch, it's okay to touch, it's okay to see in the computer, mobile, everywhere. It's okay, we justify and compromise. We are making our own Bibles. And some people are addicted to drugs, addicted to drinks. And when we ask them, when we tell them, don't do that, they come up with their own interpretation of the Bible saying, Jesus multiplied, oh, sorry, Jesus uh, changed water into wine, therefore we should drink wine, otherwise Jesus will feel bad. We are giving new, new interpretation to justify our addiction to alcohol and drug addictions. There are so many people who are interpreting Bible according to their taste. My dear brothers and sisters, we are making fifth gospel and following Jesus. I remember sometime back I was preaching against abortion. 
I was thoroughly speaking against abortion. And after my preaching, one couple, they came and they came to me to speak to me and they started shouting at me. They said, Father, I had no problem. My wife, I had no problem. Then what is your problem? I had no problem. My wife has got no problem. Then what is your problem? Then I didn't understand. First, I was shocked. What is my problem? I, I didn't understand what was my problem. Then they said, we had... Uh, we commit, we did the abortion. I had no problem. My wife had got more problem. Then what is your problem? Because I spoke against abortion so much, it irritated them. My dear brothers and sisters, when we speak the truth, it may irritate many people because it may touch them. So he got irritated and then he was asking me. Then I told him, my dear friend, it, it, you, for, for you, it may not be a problem. But for me, it is a problem. Then he, he was shocked. He said, what is your problem, father? I said, I will explain to you. I gave him one word of God to read. Let us read Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 verse 1 onwards. Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 verse 1 onwards. Acts of the Apostle chapter 9 verse 1 onwards. Meanwhile, Saul sti still breathing threads and murder against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Next one. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. Next, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. My dear brothers and sisters, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Let us go back. Verse 4 and 5, he asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters. Did Paul persecute any Christians? Sorry, he, uh, did uh, Paul persecute Jesus? He never persecuted Jesus. He only persecuted Christians. But now Jesus says, when you touch a Christian, you are touching me. When you persecute a Christian, you are persecuting me. When you abuse a Christian, you are abusing me. Because the Christians, they are part of my body. The, bo the church is the mystical body of Christ. Therefore, Jesus said, if you touch a Christian, you are touching me. Then, this is exactly what touched St. Paul. He became, Saul became Paul. And Saul was shocked when Jesus said, why are you persecuting me? Because Saul knows he never persecuted Jesus, but he only persecuted Christians. But when Jesus said, when you touch a Christian, you are touching me. When you persecute a Christian, you are persecuting me. When you abuse a Christian, you are abusing me. Now let me ask you one thing. We, the Christians, remember, if somebody from outside persecute you or me, they are persecuting Jesus Christ. That is, we all know that we are 100% sure. Now let me ask you a second question. What about when a Christian persecute another Christian? When a Christian persecute another Christian? When a Christian abuses another Christian? When a Christian hurt the other Christian? The answer is still you are persecuting Jesus Christ. Still you are persecuting Jesus Christ because that is more painful for Jesus than the other one. When a Christian persecute another Christian, that is more painful than the other one. Than a non-Christian persecute Christian. The third question, I am a Christian. I am a Christian when I persecute myself. When I abuse myself. When I hurt my body. When I desecrate my body. What happens? Then, even then, Jesus will come and ask me, Father Joseph, 
Why are you persecuting me? Why are you persecuting me? My dear brothers and sisters, this is very important. When a non-Christian or somebody else Chris, uh, abuses or hurt a Christian, they are persecuting Jesus Christ. That is what the Bible says. If that's the case, a Christian persecute a Christian, they are still persecuting Jesus Christ. Then, as a Christian, when I abuse myself and persecute myself, Jesus will come and ask me, Father Joseph, why are you persecuting me? This is very important, my dear brothers and sisters. So I told this couple who came and shouted at me because I spoke against abortion. I asked them, you committed abortion, you too, you are Christians. And you both decided to commit abortion, secretly you did it. But don't you know, when you are a Christian, you are part of the body of Christ in which I am also part. You are part of a body of Christ in which I am also part. Therefore, when you hurt my body, that is the body of Christ, it hurts me too. Therefore, I have problem. My dear brothers and sisters, no sin is an isolated individual sin. Every sin is a social sin. Even if you commit a sin secretly in your private room, locking your room and locking it with the two keys, but still you, if you commit the sin inside of your room, remember, it affects the body of Christ in which I and you all are participating. We are part of the body of Christ. Let us read some passages from the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. I am the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. Your neighbor is the body of Christ. All the Christians, all those who participate in Jesus' body through the baptism and sacraments, we are all one body of Christ, individually members of it. Therefore, if one member is suffering, if one member is committing a sin, it affects the whole body of Christ. I am also a member, you are also a member. Therefore, it affects all of us. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. We read like this. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. If I commit a sin, a sin of adultery or any kind of unholiness, remember, I am a member of the body of Christ. He is committing a sin of adultery or unholiness. It will surely hurt and persecute Jesus Christ. And thus it hurts the holy Catholic church and it affects the, all the Christians in the world. Therefore, no sin is a secret sin. Every sin is a social sin. Every sin is a social sin. It affects, even if I commit a sin here, it affects somebody in Australia. It affects the, someone in America. It is affecting the whole world. That is why the sin is increasing so much. Let us read Romans chapter 12 verse 5. Romans chapter 12 verse 5. Let's read. So, who we who are many so we who are many are one body in christ and individually we are members of one another one of another ephesians chapter 5 verse 30 ephesians chapter 5 verse 30 30 30 we read like this because we are members of his body. Therefore, if one person committed sin, it affects everyone. If, if that person committed sin and is suffering because of his sin, is not only he is suffering, everybody is suffering because of him. Let us read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 26. Let us read. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. 
if one member suffers all suffer together with it if one member commit abortion secretly thinking that i am not affecting anybody it's only my matter it is my personal choice it is my personal choice it is mine you cannot say that as long as you are part of one human body of christ that is the body of christ we all are responsible for your crime we all will go through the consequence of your sin this is very this is a mystery my dear brothers and sisters this is really a mystery do you think do you think what is happening in this world in all the calamities tragedies pandemic and all these things is just a, a creation of or god sent it or something like this this is nothing but our own sins the consequence of our, our own sins we the, look at the cancer why the cancer is spreading so much we know it is because of the greed of the human being greed of the human being we are inviting all these calamities because of our greed greedy nature and the pride and egoism not ready to follow the command of god even the bible is not so important for us we just ignore it my dear brothers and sisters this is dangerous there are many people who justify the act of abortion the governments are passing laws supporting it so many innocent babies are being killed and no one feels like standing for the the voiceless children these children these babies who are killed they don't have a voice if they had voice you will see all these trees full of these children fighting shouting slogans against all the mothers my dear brothers and sisters since they don't have voice we are suppressing their voice inside the womb the most safe place in the whole world supposed to be most safe place in the world is supposed to be the mother's womb we have made legally a, a, this uh, womb a cemetery of so many children my dear brothers and sisters we need to stop these kinds of evil we should never in any way support this and i remember one day one lady who came to our retreat center and she was crying she was so much in depression and she was terribly disturbed and she is not able to sleep and then she came and spoke to me and then she said father i want to speak to you something very important and then those days i never used to speak so so strongly against abortions because though i knew the abortion is so sinful but there are many mothers many many women who became pregnant not because they wanted it but because they are raped or some other reasons they happen to be pregnant and now they had to carry that baby so it is very painful for them so i i used to just imagine if i am in their, their position how can i accept this baby so i used to wonder how do i uh, uh, give an answer so just since i did not get a proper answer convincing answer i always keep quiet about this aspect but that is when this lady came and told me this lady came and said father i have not seen anybody speaking against uh, against abortion do you all justify it i said 100% we will never justify it it's a sin it is the teaching of the church that abortion is evil and it is criminal then she said father then you should speak against it i said ah, we are preaching against it why do you say this then she said father some years ago i did abortion she said and she said i never wanted to do that i was raped by a man and then after some time i hated that man he raped me and i hated that man and i was uh, later i came to know i am pregnant then i was admitted in a catholic hospital and then when i came when they came to know that i am a preg i am pregnant everybody said you know uh, they 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 showed pity for me they said it is better abort so i was confused what shall i do my relatives and family members said 
Why do you want to carry his baby? That is not your baby. Though that baby is born in your womb, you never wanted this baby. He raped you. You should not carry a baby of a rapist. So this is what my parents and my family members, everyone told me. But I was not convinced. Because I know this baby is also mine. Though it is the a victim of rape, but this baby is also mine. And then there was a religious nun in that hospital. She came to me to speak. After listening to my problem, the religious nun felt so bad. She also started crying with me because she could not tolerate my pain. She could not uh, uh, just stand by with my pain. But she said, daughter, don't worry. It is better you go for abortion. I can't look at you going through this pain. Better you go for abortion. It is not your child. It is a, of a, a child of a, a rapist. You are not supposed to carry this baby. A, you just go for abortion. This is what that nun told her. And then since that nun told her, she decided to go for abortion. She went for abortion. And after some days, she, everything was okay. But after some, some months, she started having guilt feeling inside. The guilt started haunting her, disturbing her. And slowly, slowly, she started losing sleep. And then slowly, she started seeing dreams. In sometimes the disturbed sleep, and in the disturbed sleep, she started seeing dreams where she's seeing this baby. And slowly, it went into depression. Now she can't sleep. And she said, Father, in order to escape from a small pain, I did abortion. But now, rest of my life, I am going through a terrible pain. I, now I feel I would have chosen that pain and brought up my child. I should have chosen that pain and accepted that pain and brought up that, this child instead of aborting. Now, since in order to escape from that pain, I aborted the child. Now, all throughout my life, I'm going through the guilt feeling and the pain of it. Therefore, Father, please tell the whole world, just because you are a victim of a rape or just because of a victim of something, please do not go for abortion. It is better to take this pain in the name of Jesus as Jesus carried the cross which was not his own but he carried the sins of the whole world not his sin but he carried the cross to die on Mount Calvary. If anyone who is a victim of these kinds of actions remember your model is Jesus Christ. Let us let's carry the sin of someone and go to the Mount Calvary and be a martyrdom, a living martyrdom. Living martyr for this baby. Then that is far better than committing a sin of abortion and rest of your life for living in guilt feeling. My dear brothers and sisters, there are so many things. The world will convince you with many wrong things. We, at, at the, suddenly you will feel this is very good. Suddenly you feel this is the truth. Suddenly you will feel it is attractive. My dear brothers and sisters, every sin comes like this, very attractive at the first sight. At the first sight, it is very attractive. We read Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, we read like this. When, so, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that... The tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took off its fruit and ate. My dear brothers and sisters, the original sin happened because the food was so attractive. At first sight, it is so attractive. It is delight to the eyes. It is very good for the food. And it is desired to make one wise. But permanently, it created an original sin on humanity, on humanity, a permanent scar on the humanity. What is that permanent scar? Original sin. The devil is a devil is crooked. He will hide what is going to affect you permanently. 
but he will show you the instant pleasure instant pleasure in front of you and attract you instant pleasure in front of you and attract you but he forget he he hides in front of you the permanent scar that is going to affect in our human being human body my dear brothers and sisters that is why one thing i always remember sometimes my preaching is not so so you know pleasing to the ears of many people and sometimes it is not easy to preach these things because i know that there will be so much of criticism and all these kinds of things will come against me people may not be happy to listen and people will cut off their uh, relationship and people will be irritated people will be criticizing against me if i preach all these truths of the bible bluntly but one thing always i remember the word of god psalm 69 verse 6 and 7 Psalm 69 verse 6 and 7 we read like this Do not let those who hope do not let those who hope in you be put to shame because of me O Lord God of hosts do not let those who seek you be dishonored because of me My dear brothers and sisters this is the one prayer that I always want to pray always want to make sure that I follow it do not let those who hope in you if somebody is connected to you because of me they should not be put to shame because of me they should not commit sin because of me they should not be misled because of me just because i want appreciation from the people appreciation from everybody i don't want anyone to be mislead misguided or misled it is for your sake that i have borne reproach that shame has covered my face let us read colossians chapter 3 verse 23 let us read colossians chapter 3 verse 23 we read like this whatever you are task put yourselves into it as done for the lord and not for your masters whatever you task put yourself into it my dear brothers and sisters do not compromise the teaching of jesus do not drink soup made by you let us take the soup that god has given let us don't make our own soups and drink and say we are following jesus christ let us don't make our own bibles and say that we are following the real bible whatever your task put yourselves into it as done for the lord and not for your masters verse 24 since you know that from the lord you will receive the inheritance as you are reward you serve the lord jesus christ since you know that from the lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward you serve the lord christ we read first timothy chapter 1 verse 12 first timothy chapter 1 verse 12 i am grateful to christ jesus our lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service my dear brothers and sisters every christian is called to be the faithful appointed servant of god please make sure that you don't compromise the teaching of christ we should never water down the teaching of christ just because we want to please some masters this is very important if you serve god with a faithful heart undivided heart with commitment then we read John chapter 12 verse 26 John chapter 12 verse 26 Whoever serves me first whoever serves me must follow me and where I am there will my servant be also Whoever serves me the father will honor Whoever serves Jesus 100% with commitment and faithfulness without compromising without mixing their own making their own soup without making their own fifth gospel and follow the teaching as it is taught by the church just follow it 100% with commitment the lord says 
whoever serves me with commitment faithfulness 100% faithfulness faithfulness the father will honor them god will honor them father the heavenly father himself will honor them my dear brothers and sisters as we are going to con continue this york holy eucharist let us examine our conscience and see how do we follow jesus christ are we making our own soup are we making our own gospels are we compromising the teaching of christ are we just uh, changing the in, uh, according to the intention and taste we are reading the bible according to our taste let us examine our conscience and see if we are doing the same let us say lord i'm sorry for compromising your teaching lord lord you have taught us many things in the bible but we have only taken what is pleasing to us what is possible for us what is not possible for us we just ignored it and it just kept it kept it kept it away from us and we think now we are a very good christian but now we know through our behavior and actions we are in fact persecuting you lord